got their trigger finger on the reset button. <laughs> but before we fully push it, we got to talk, girls. I feel hella blessed to be in this space for a stack of reasons. Just one off the top of my dome is you guys are my type of women. For real. Women who prioritize everything that is purpose-driven. Mm -hmm. Women who have no fear in grabbing the biggest shovel and digging till they unearth their truth and then making it a point to magnify that truth, to sit in that truth, to share that truth. I went to an event in 2015, or was it 2014? 2014, 2014 that changed my life and I was supposed to get up in front of like a group of people like this and tell them my story but by the time like I came to the front I, I started crying like that was the end of the that was the end of the interview or or you know my motivational speech and I remember telling them you know I'm supposed to be up here and telling everyone these amazing things about my brand and my life but I don't like my brand and I don't like my life and I felt very stuck but when I left that event, it, I knew I only had a year left. And I knew by the time the next September rolled around, it was like September 5th or something like that, that I could not be doing the same thing. It was very important to me to launch my new website, Exo Nicole, which is about empowering young women and inspiring them to share their stories. It was very important for me to launch it before the anniversary that I was at this event crying in front of people about how I hated my brand. My transitional journey has been a struggle, <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> First of all, I wanna say, Nicole, you are a phenomenal woman. Yeah. Like you are truly incredible. And it's so funny because you're so, you're so humble. Like you carry yourself with such a humility where you won't even necessary, necessarily like stand in the fullness of who you are and say like, look what I'm doing. But to change your life and it was so successful to stay where you were, but you chose discomfort. Mm -hmm. And like all of us can be that courageous, you know? You chose discomfort. And the road you're on now, and, and I, I say this, I try to say this to you whenever I see you, but like you're literally changing lives. I didn't really blink an eye when God pulled me to move across the country three times and know nobody where I went, you know? Um, and that to me is one of the best gifts you can give yourself to, like answer that call of adventure. You know, don't get scared of who you're leaving behind because your duty isn't to be a companion to anyone. It's to follow the call when you hear it. There's this quote that I love and I shared it in that video so you'll see it couple weeks um <laughs> this quote that I love that says um the snake that cannot shed its skin must perish mm -hmm. so what that means is if you are choosing to hold on to whatever it is right now for whatever reasons you have and you know you need to go whether that's physically or emotionally or mentally you're gonna have it a lot harder because God wants you to die to yourself. He wants your ego to die. He wants those pieces of you that you're holding tightly to die. I know how you feel. I started off working in the entertainment industry. I worked at the top PR firm at the time. I went on tour with Linkin Park. I worked with Prince, Christina Aguilera, and like people knew me and like, you know, it was like I mattered, you know, but it was like, why do, why do I matter working with other people on doing this? I feel like sometimes we have to be broken down or taken down to a place where we can hear. Okay, I get on my knees and it's like, you better not shed another tear and you better not tell another person that this guy brought you to Atlanta and left you. Like, I brought you to Atlanta for a reason. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't ask what? but I felt purposed. And at that point, I never shed another tear. And it was like, I felt like that opened me up to like every call that came, I had to take it. Like, you need to do a podcast. You need to start this business. Every call that comes, I must take it because I'm here for a reason. God won't give you a dream you can't fulfill. Yeah. You know, like it's on your head for a reason. It's on your heart for a reason. He, there's no coincidences in this world. That's the thing you really gotta know. Every, every pitfall, every obstacle, it was sent to you for you by him. The process takes however long it takes. You are, there's nothing else you need to be doing because you're showing up for yourself. Yep. Like that's the hardest choice to make and that's the biggest thing you can do is 
give life, give you your best effort. When we release the thought that things are against us or things are unfair or things need to be better, we are able to open ourselves up to a, a lot of joy in our lives and, and gratitude. And gratitude isn't just saying thank you when things go your way. Gratitude is being resilient. Yep. Like gratitude in motion is saying, oh, I have an obstacle, but life still feels good and I'm gonna find a way around it. At 25 years old, I was like, it is now or never. I'm gonna take my life as serious as I possibly can. When you come over, I don't care about gossip. I don't care about who's wearing what. I wanna know what are you doing to progress in life and I wanna be inspired by you. And this is the kind of people that I surround myself with. And people who, people, who get sick of that, they stop coming around. Every few months, it's like, I have to be like, am I who I say I am? Because, you know, I'm on here telling y'all that I'm Miss Empowered, Miss This, but am I really? And I need the people around me to be like, are you who you say you are? If I'm with someone who's not holding me up, and so just be who you are, and the people, they're gonna fall off because it's too exhausting to be great all the time. And they will eventually, you won't have to cut them off, they'll cut themselves off. <laughs> what is the difference between a leap of faith and a leap of impulse? How do we know if we should turn the chapter or if we should just clear our lens <laughs> and maybe reread the chapter we're currently in? Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> I maybe not got all the answers, but I got some damn questions, okay? <laughs> Toyota. Let's go places. You cannot make a rash decision. You, can, you have to strategize about your life, which of course means have food, have some shelter, but also spend an adequate amount of time, not only in prayer, but in silence to hear the answer. Because the, the, the leading of your intuition for good and your ego, because we haven't yet learned to fully release that, it's very closely related. So once you release ego, your perspective of everything around you changes. My check in balance every single time, every single time I am talking trash to myself is I give it the is it true challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't know what you're doing. Like, says who? Like, who can verify that? Or a lot of things that I found that like, I just was very intimidated by other people that I thought were better than me and like, why? It's the stuff we tell ourselves and every time you start talking shit to yourself, you have to say, who can, is this true? And it's not. I am not my title. And I think that holds a lot of us back, especially when it comes to needing a change in our professional lives. And when I started to really understand who the hell I was as a soul. Think about when your mother found out she was pregnant with you. She had no idea if you were even a boy or a girl, but she was alive with something. And I wanted to get to know that something that was underneath a pile of labels and expectations from others and from myself. You're still in the process of getting to know yourself because we come from an infinite space. So there's always gonna be levels to who we are. But as long as we consciously decide to know ourselves in the purest form, that dopeness is always gonna be transferable. At all freaking times. <laughs> we need to demystify some of these things that we see now a lot everywhere, like the, the word like self-care or self-love. Like we need to demystify it because it seems like this thing that we don't even know how to start and that it's supposed to be better than whatever we're trying to do. <laughs> Self-care for me means um, on a daily basis, it's remembering to be quiet. It's meditating. It's promising myself that a few moments are just for me to be still. I'm not trying to accomplish a thing other than being quiet and as much as I can not thinking. I can do anything because of the work ethic that I have and because of my reputation, people will trust me with their business or their dollar. So if you are a little late to things, if you lie a little bit, if you 
cheat a little bit, if you steal a little bit, and you steal when you say you're going to do something and you don't do it and you get paid, you're stealing. That is your reputation. And guess what? Nobody's going to trust you when you call and say you're a stylist now. Nobody's going to trust you. So you need to show up to make yogurt like you're going to show up to style, like you're going to show up to the car dealership. You need to be the same person all the time. And when you are the same person, you can call people and say, so I've got this idea for a subscription box. And they say, what do you need? Because of your reputation. So that's all you need. Raise your hand and use your voice. A lot of us are suffering and we have not, like, like when people are upset with me or they, like, you never said anything. You, you, you want to be doing video and you're doing voice, like say something. And a lot of times you're not saying anything and you're sitting there and it's like you're suffering and your work is suffering, but like you have to like throw the flag up and be okay with saying like, I'm sucking at this because I just don't enjoy it anymore. Is there anything else that I can do? And don't be afraid to say that. And I don't think that we don't give people a chance to, to help us. We're just there and we're just suffering and, and you have to say something. And it's just like, no one's gonna die if you say you don't like this anymore. And I think, like I always say, you have the right to change your mind. I might as well be in the audience. <laughs> Cause I, I held this event for me. Like, I'm, no, but serious, like I'm in the, like I'm not on the other side of the transition yet. I'm still knee, knee deep in it. You know, I'm not on the side where I can reflect. I believe every major transition requires three years. If you have not given it three years, you cannot complain and you cannot give up to me. The first year of the transition, and I have transitioned enough times, and that's when she's like, did you just come up with that number? I'm like, no, I've lived through the transition. <laughs> I've lived through enough transitions to know. The first year is like the WTF, the what am I doing? Year one is just all falling down, all starting over. It's like the like the humbling of yourself of like like let me bring you down a notch That's year one year two is familiarity like okay These people have seen me for a year. They don't know how to spell my name, but they've heard it <laughs> my leak um, year two is really just kind of like I'm you're familiar and they're familiar and I feel like year three is like you get it and they get it. The biggest mistake I've made <laughs> last year is comparing myself to my old success. Yeah. And so that's probably what like you go through a lot as a radio person then starting over. You keep comparing yourself to your old success and that that is where all my self-doubt comes from. Versus your starting point. Exactly. Compare, compare starting points. And, and I'm like, why am I comparing year one <laughs> to something I did for eight years. I think a lot of times for us as um, women, some form of our conditioning is always to apologize for ourselves. And then we reach a point where we're apologizing for normality. And we don't need to do that. Like that's another skin that needs to be shed, right? And I think as long as, again, we're being authentic and we pause to say, how are we saying something? And it doesn't mean that you need to pander to someone's ego, to someone's feelings, but you also don't have to be on the extreme side of the spectrum, but you're allowed your peace. And you don't, and poof. And then also once you feel obligatory to be this quote unquote inspiration, girl, you will be the leading tower of Gia and it will not be cute. So your authenticity is always what's marketable. For real, for real. Toyota. Let's go places.